All right, so today we're going to be talking about building an adjustable tension board. Um, first, uh, I needed a space, so I took this garage bay door and we removed it. Um, just took it out, put it away in storage. Uh, now we had to, of course, make a wall since it's just open space. So we start adding 16 inch studs, two by fours. Um, took a couple of guys, about four, me and, me and a couple guys, four or five hours to do this. Once we put in the horizontal supports, we start putting in the three quarter inch ply on the outside. I wanted this to be a nice looking wall on the outside as well. So once that was up, um, you know, we then had to, uh, you know, I painted that, I sealed it, uh, and then put in the insulation on the inside. So now I have all my exposed beams and I'm ready to build. First step is, uh, of course, taking the three quarter inch maple that I'm using uh, and, um, you know, putting in the T-nut holds. Uh, this is a specific grid that Tension has uh, specs on. You got to make sure it's uh, accurate or else you're going to run into trouble down the road. Um, that part isn't so hard. The one thing I would say I would definitely do different this next time um, is we had a lot of blowout on the back, so I would drill a hole in. What we're looking at is the back of, of the boards here where it's mapped. And uh, unfortunately, the clean cuts are on the back of the boards. They blew out the, the front side. So what I would do, and I've done this before with other builds and kind of skipped this step, uh, shame on me, is I would map it out on the back just like I did and then draw pilot holes through each of the, uh, the X's that I, I would label as um, to be drilled. That way you don't have any... Um, blow out when you put in the pilot hole through the other side and then you can just flip it over after you're done uh, drilling a pilot hole through each one uh, and then the, all the blowout will be on the back of the wall so it won't matter and you'll have nice clean edges on the front definitely don't skip that step it is uh it, it makes a big difference with appeal um we had to do a lot of sanding to get ours to to have nice edges on the front so i think you can skip that step if you just prepare up front uh, but once all the holes are in place, you do the three uh, four by eight boards and the kicker, and we'll start ready to put the T-nuts in. I definitely find that the T-nuts uh, need to be the right quality. If you go ahead and you try to get the four prong uh, hammer ins, it's just not going to work. You're going to end up with spinners. Um, the, we used um, Atomics uh, you know, T-nuts here where they have three screws per. And you got to make sure that you're putting them in the right holes because we dr uh, originally drilled holes for all of the T-nuts plus all of the LED lights. We did not purchase the LED lights at this time, but we are preparing the boards as if we will be putting in the LED lights. Um, definitely don't skimp on the T-nuts. Got to go for the three, the three screw, um, at the stainless steel. It's worth your while. You do not want to be messing with this thing every couple of sessions, you know, trying to get in the back to adjust the spinner. It's it's not worth it. You spend that little extra, make sure that that step is clean. Uh, I put the kicker frame in then. Uh, I screwed that in with five and a half inch screws through to the studs on the other side. Uh, so that's pretty secure. And then we slap up the, um, uh, the face making sure that we have a space for the LEDs to come through uh, when, whenever we get to that. Now we uh, start to frame out the main board here. And uh, just to note, I do do a ceiling constraints. I built this a little differently. I built it as a, an adjustable wall, but also an adjustable height wall. And I'll show you what that means uh, later on. But this is the first two and a half boards, making it a row one through 15. Um, now you need to make sure that you have your horizontals with space for the LEDs to come through. So this is what I'm doing now. You can kind of see we're creating uh, gaps in the bottom of the horizontal supports that will allow for the LED strings to come through. This is a must because um, this, the LED strings have to be able to go under the horizontal supports, not over. They will not have room. So. Uh, you want to make sure that you, you do this well. Now, this, I wouldn't say is well. It is done, uh, and this technique is suspect. This saw is suspect, but um, whatever tools you have, you got to find a way to create these, uh, these little tunnels for the LEDs to fit through. Uh, I made it out of the, this phase unscathed. Um, no lost fingers, no uh, misfires of any kind, which is awesome. Definitely the sketchiest part of the build, though, was was right here on this next one. You almost feel like, uh, you know, if the breeze comes along the wrong way, you're just going to end up like Tommy Caldwell. 
no thank you. But um, yeah, this is an important step. Make sure you do not skip it. It is not worth the hassle. Once those are up, you can kind of see the horizontal supports have the line, uh, uh, the tunnels underneath them. Once those horizontal supports are in place, we put the face on. Once the face is on, and you think you can see I use a nail gun, do not use a nail gun. Get screws in there, worth your time. Uh, we start putting in the hinges. So here, uh, I, I map it first. So I bring it over, I try to figure out, you know, where these are going to go. Um, I'm using four very heavy duty um, hinges. They're very, very strong. Uh, I'm putting them directly into the, the studs. Uh, so it should be pretty secure and it has been uh, through lots of use so far. So um, you might get away with more, but they're $6 a pop. And again, I, I wouldn't say skimp on anything, but um, four seemed to be enough uh, for my setup here. Uh, once that's all set in place, uh, then we have to you know, start putting in some eye hooks. And this is not a great picture, but that's kind of an example. Those eye hooks get drilled all the way in through the studs on the wall. We have a few of them in place. It's what those green straps are attached to. Uh, this is just a preliminary uh, kind of hookup. This is like their first time that we have it on the wall just to see how the hinges work. Um, and, and so the hinges, yay, they work, okay? <laughs> Not the best setup yet. And as you can see, it's kind of a short wall. It's rows 1 through 15, uh, and the rest will come at a later step. But if anybody has space constraints, 1 through 15 is, is great. The tension boards 1 through 15 is fantastic. I would say that uh, if you have the space, get um, 16, 17, and 18. It is a big difference. Like the extra two and a half feet makes a world of difference. Um, and, and here I am, you know, trying to figure out how the heck I'm going to get this thing up to, you know, my 20, 25 degrees uh, <laughs> with just, just myself. As you can see, I'm pushing it with a ladder and then ratcheting straps. Uh, you'll see that um, once this thing is set, I put up the holds. My original thing was I just had set A. And I think that set A is good, but you really, set B made it all the difference. So here is set A, just my very first trial. I did this all in one day, that whole build plus this. So I'm pretty beat, but I'm just excited to be on this thing. It climbs so well. The wood is such a good medium to climb on. It feels like you know, you're making some, some major movements on these, uh, on these types of holds. Uh, once the chains go up too, it feels very secure. Right now I'm on straps and the straps give, have a lot of give to them. But uh, the, another game changer was the addition of the electric winch. Uh, this was game changer because now I don't have to hoist it up uh, with my hands. I don't have to hoist it up with um, the straps or, or ropes or anything. I just you know press a button and it goes where it needed to go. Very, very important. I think for an adjustable wall. But now it's time to build the top. So with rows one through 15 done, it's time to build uh, the last uh, little bit. Now this part again is something that didn't fit when it's up. So I had to create a way to kind of allow it to hinge. So on this one, we, we built the top section uh, 16, 17 and 18 with LED support, same as before. And we used four hinges again to have it fold out the back. That way I can use one through 15 when it's at 20 to, to you know 35 degrees. Then once it hits 40 degrees, boom, you can unfold the flap, you get the top, you get the full board support uh, and we get an opportunity to have just a killer, versatile machine here where I'm able to, to really take uh, and utilize this to its highest potential uh, with the ceiling constraint that I have. Uh, we have the back, we have cross support, we have extra eye hooks, extra chains, lots of redundancies just in case something were to go. Uh, and I feel very secure when I'm climbing on this thing. It feels very uh, steady and very strong. I'd say the one thing is that at the very tip top, it can get a little bowy, but you know, with the chains up there, it doesn't go anywhere. And uh, yeah, that's my setup. It's a beautiful setup, highly recommended. Uh, you get a tension board.